Hello friends, welcome back. We are going to learn SQL or DPC++ and this is going to be step by step learning for you and this becomes part and parcel of Intel 1 APA. Let's understand what is SQL, what is the difference between SQL and DPC++, what are the fundamental things that you need to learn, how do you try it out practically, how do you use the Intel's dev cloud for you to try out and practically understand all these things will be demonstrated in this sessions. I am going to have three or four sessions continuously and all these will be very easy to understand and I will give you all the reference materials. Let's understand the difference between SQL and DPC++. SQL, it's pronounced as S-I-C-K-L-E, SQL and DPC++, they are actually pretty much related. They are used for developing parallel applications which can enable you to run them on the hardware architectures which can be CPU, GPU, FPGA or any other accelerator. What do I mean by that? Simple with SQL and DPC++ you can develop some application and it can enable you to run them on different hardware platforms which could be CPU, GPU or FPGA. Now, SQL is an open standard. Yes, it is an open standard for heterogeneous programming which provides a clear C++ abstraction layer. It is based on C++. You will feel it when you start coding it and it provides you a very clear C++ abstraction layer for programming with various accelerator devices which is CPU, GPU or FPGA. And it allows the developers to write code which can be executed in various devices, various range of devices without having necessity for the developer to write any device specific code. Remember, you are not forced to write anything extra. Whatever you are writing, it can be easily moved to various platforms, various hardware devices, CPU, GPU, FPG or any other accelerator. No problem, your code will still work. Now coming to the next part which is nothing but DPC++, it is an implementation of the SQL. It is an implementation of the SQL which is provided by Intel. Remember, I have got SQL, I have got a version or implementation of the SQL which is coming along with the Intel One API toolkit and that's what is called as DPC++. DPC++ extends SQL to support various range of hardware just like how SQL supports like CPU, GPU, FPGA. And what is the advantage? You have got multiple additional libraries when it comes to an API. You have got excellent toolkit which is going to help you in optimizing the performance. It will also help you in debugging the code that you develop. Overall, SQL is an open standard for heterogeneous programming that provides a very clear C++ abstraction layer for programming in various devices. The devices can be CPU, GPU, FPGA or any other accelerator. But DPC++ is an implementation of the SQL which is provided by Intel with more additional libraries, more additional features, toolkits which will help you in getting things better. This is the major difference between SQL and DPC++. Now, we need to learn DPC++ because the world is getting more into parallel programming. So we need to understand SQL or DPC++ and it's very easy to learn. I'm telling you, anybody can learn DPC++ or SQL so easily and with one API in place, it's going to be much, much easier for you. With DevCloud in place, anybody can try it, learn it without installing much of the things and it's going to be a cakewalk for you. Now, this is based on C++. So what is the benefit I get? You already know C++, so you are going to utilize the skill set that you already have with a little more advancements, little more learning. You are going to be a very good programmer with DPC++. This is 100% standard based and cross architecture support is there. And you already know the constructs. You know everything about C++. It's going to be a cakewalk for you here. And incorporates the SQL standard for the data parallelism and we get heterogeneous programming support. That's the major point that we are all focusing on. This is going to be easy and you will love it. Right. Before we go deeper into SQL, before we go deeper into how exactly the code can be written, remember the points here. It is slightly new to you, but it is not completely new. Whenever you see the code, you will be able to understand and realize like you have seen it somewhere. Now, welcome to the world of SQL here. You are going to write your first code. This is Hello SQL World Code. 
it is a new language as i told you it is standards based cross architecture support enabled and importantly very very easy for learn very easy for learning and anybody can learn it is based on the well known iso c++ and hence you will find it very easy for you to implement and to code the best point is familiarity of the c++ goes hand in hand with the advantages of the sickle sickle brings you data parallelism and heterogeneous computing support and to call it in a simple way it is c++ plus sickle plus community support that gets you excellent super cool language for you to program for you to use enhanced capabilities of the hardware and it is going to be very simple for you to code as well now we are having a very simple code in front of you which is your first sickle code you can see that most of them are looking very similar to whatever you have learned in your c++ but the header file is different include cl slash sickle dot hpp now if you come here you can also see that host code and the device code are going hand in hand in the same code we do not have a separate host code separate accelerator device code it is all going to be in the same part the constructs that you are very familiar with already are two you can see that we have been using this queue for a long time right so this is queue which is being used here ml lock you know for memory allocation but here we have it as ml lock underscore shared i'm going to talk more about it a little later but hold on until then it's a very simple code where i'm not exploring much things but i'm going to give you an introductory view now if you see that for loop we all know in c and c plus plus here it is called parallel for i'll explain you that a little later again now all these are the minor changes ml lock underscore shared parallel underscore for these kind of changes are the one that is going to be learned by you newly the rest all will stay and we also have a concept called as usm unified shared memory i'll talk about it a little later it is all about single source i reiterate this point the host code and the device code are together in the same file this is a very important point to remember please do not forget it you have familiarity with the library functions you have familiarity with the constructs whatever you are seeing and this is the simplest way where one can understand how a sickle code or dpc++ code looks like parallel for is the new thing earlier it was for now it is parallel for these are all the things that we simply have to learn in addition to whatever we have already learned so remember it this is your first code when do i run it where can i run it i'll show you all those shortly you can understand that too very clearly right so we'll learn very simple you can get all these learning clearly through the dev cloud dev cloud offers you a lot many things and it gets you free access to intel one api toolkits and it's totally mesmerizing actually so you get 220 gb of file storage 192 gb ram 120 days of free access you have got terminal interface visual studio integration you have got remote desktop facilities and most importantly you have got variety of hardware support for you have got cpu gpu and fpga available and all these can be created at your fingertip i have flashed the link there right in front of you go click it and you will be able to create your own dev cloud access and with that you will be able to code everything right i am going to walk you through that as well and i need sample codes where will i learn the sample codes very simple you can go ahead and clone it from the github we have got a very strong set of content and sample codes tutorials available in the github created by intel one api team and you can do a git clone and the command is available in front of you as well i'm going to show you all this practically as well so that you can understand things very clearly let's get into the practical part of it where i will show you how exactly you can go ahead and open the dev cloud and use it i'll just walk you through that quickly and then we will go into the typical classes i hope that's fine now this is the link i told you you should go on after you get registered for the dev cloud account cloud.intel.com/onepa/getstarter the moment you go into it you will get a lot of materials about the toolkit supported base toolkit the hpc toolkit the a analytics toolkit rendering toolkit and you have so many here and where do you have to go you have to go to this launch jupiter lab option and when you click launch jupiter lab you will be taken to this page where you will get into the jupiter lab page jupiter lab is integrated with one api here for you for your ease of operation and it's very easy for you to use from here on i'll just walk you through this through you in the session and the next session we will discuss the classes that are available in the circle and then you can start coding also i'll give you some examples i'll also show you where exactly you can get the git cloning done all those things will be demonstrated to you easily now if you see that this is the way things will look like when you get in into the dev cloud and this is the jupiter lab interface for you now you can use the notebook options with tensorflow 
uh, Python, Pytas. All these are optimized or you can go ahead with terminal option. You can see that here, this is your regular Linux what you have and you can see the commands out working out here very clearly. And once you issue this command in the um, terminal, I'll just show you the way you can do that. All the codes that are available in the GitHub with relation to the one AP samples, essentials, all these things will be made available to you locally in your DevCloud account, which means you will get this complete directory available for you where you've got all the complete learning materials available for you at your fingertips. You can see that it starts with introduction to Jupyter, one AP intro, DPC++ program structure, unified shared memory, subgroups, Every topic in the one APA, every topic in the cycle is all discussed here very clearly with examples. For an instance, if I go to DPC++ program structure, there will be an IPYNB file where you've got the codes available for you and you can start running it also. You need to just select the cell, run it. You can edit it. If you make mistakes, that's not a problem at all because you can get tone again whenever you want. All these are very easily done for you. Try it out. I'll flash the links in the description section so that it will be easy for you to go ahead with this session. I have just given you overview of what is the difference between sickle and DPC++, what is sickle, how a sickle program looks like, that's it. So next session, we will go and understand clearly the sickle classes. Thank you very much for following the channel, the content. If you have any questions, please stop me. Cut, cut, cut. If you have any questions, please type it in the chat section. I'll be happy to answer. Thank you.